This right here is a quadratic equation. The good thing about what we see on this slide right here is that it's nothing new, right? I think everything we've seen right up to this point has been pretty much in this form ax squared plus bx plus c. And if it's an equation, it's equal to zero, okay? So if we can factor this thing out, then we can solve for two values of x that would give us a true statement on this thing. Now this second part here, a doesn't equal zero. If a were zero, then it would have a linear equation. And we can solve those. We're, we're, in fact, now that we're, we're this deep into 1010, we'd be happy to solve those now, right? In 980, you guys would have still hated it, but now we'd, we, we love those. So we've seen something like this already as well. If b is a real number, I, that's kind of just some gibberish right there. I, we're going to be dealing with some imaginary numbers too, but whatever. Uh, if a squared equals b, you see we can we can go into this thing and kind of square root both sides, right? And so it's kind of like the absolute value of a is the square root of b. Hopefully that sounds a little familiar. Now I'm, I'm going to point this out and I don't want it to confuse you so if it does please ignore it. Okay? But remember we can we can kind of split this up so that a is also a is the positive square root of b but also that a is the negative square root of b. That's pretty much what this is saying right here. Just keep in mind on this thing this uh this negative is not in the square root, right? Otherwise, it gives us an imaginary number, which is okay now. Let's look at this equation in context. It's in that context, right? So, in other words, if we had a squared equals b, without showing all that work we just did, a is b, uh, I'm sorry, the square root of b, and also the negative square root of b, okay? Now, it doesn't really look like a squared equals b right now, but we can force it to be that if we were just to add 30 on both sides of the equal sign. So now we have t squared equals a positive 30. And then if we were to square root both sides, then we would have just the t and we have the positive square root of 30 and the negative square root of 30 that is t. Now, of course, if we were really ambitious, and it's hard to do that sometimes after doing this for hours, right? Uh, we would want to check. So we'd go back to the original equation and would put both of these values in. So I would have a t squared minus a 30 equals 0. I need this to be a true statement, right? So I'm going to replace t I can replace it first with the square root of 30. Well, the square root of 30 squared is 30, so I have 30 minus 30 equals 0. And completing this 0 equals 0 is true. So that checks this one off. And then I can go in and just make that a negative 30 square root. But since I'm squaring a negative that answer is going to come out as a positive 30 as well, which means 0 equals 0 is true also.